What's up guys and welcome back to the Stocks with Mike and Tom show. In today's video, we're going to be going over why the market fell today and what's going on with Netflix earnings. But before we get into today's, into today's video, uh, consider subscribing to our new channel for live trading and live streaming. The link will be in the description down below. Tom and I have been going live every single morning right around market open, so feel free to subscribe. The link will be in the description down below. But for today's video, like I said, we're going to be covering what happened in the market today Today, some of the best plays for the rest of this week and what to watch out for for tomorrow if you are new here don't forget to subscribe but let's get right into today's video yeah right when the market closed Netflix reported their earnings and man I did not expect Netflix to go down like this but they were at $550 at close and just came roaring all the way down to lows of 480 now in after hours and they actually had good earnings their EPS was 3.75 versus a 2.97 expected and the revenue was 7.16 billion versus 7.13 billion expected but their global paid net subscriber additions were 3.98 million versus 6.2 million um, expected according to FactSet. And that's a huge miss on subscriber uh, additions. And that, that's showing that their subscriber growth is slowing pretty tremendously. And um, it's that's bad news for Netflix. Um, Disney Plus also, let's go check Disney Plus and After Hours. They're not moving too much. They did have a, a little bit of a spike, I think, because of Netflix, but I think that's about it. I don't think it's gonna affect them too much unless they start slowing down subscribers as well. But Man, that's pretty crazy that Netflix dropped this much over 10% going from 550 to below 500. For sure. I want to talk about this one a little bit more. It's down 10% in after hours. That's a pretty big deal. And I just want to recap some of the numbers you pointed out like a minute ago. And here's the thing. Their EPS was pretty good. They brought in 3.75 versus an estimate of 2.97. Their revenue was pretty good too. But the global net subscriber additions were just horrible, like you said. So that's really why it's dragging Netflix down. And um, I'm sure everyone's wondering, all right, well, how can we capitalize off of this opportunity? And there's two ways. One, uh, it should be very volatile come tomorrow morning. So there should be a lot of opportunities for day trades. But what I will be doing most likely is if we see Netflix still down a lot by tomorrow morning, I'm just going to sell some really far out of the money Netflix puts to put me in a win-win situation. So I'm not going to go too much in detail with uh, what cash secured puts are. But basically, if Netflix is down to like, let's say, 485 tomorrow, I can sell like a 450 strike put and I'll get paid money to do that. And in the worst case scenario, I have to buy Netflix at 450. So that's just a random example. If you want to learn more about this strategy, it's called the cash secured put. But what else happened in the market today? Yeah, there was actually a lot of other interesting um, catalysts today. A lot of stocks were down, but we did have an Apple event today, um, under ticker AAPL. And a lot of people kind of expected this to help Apple, but they did end up going down. And at this event, they announced new iPad Pros, colorful iMacs, AirTags, and more. And I actually have an article here for you guys pulled up. And this is um, on CNBC, but this is showing some of the stuff. So this is the new iPad Pro. You can see what that looks like right there. Um, and then we can see the new, this is the new iMac that everyone's talking about. It's a pretty nice looking design. It has some nice color in it. Um, it's very skinny as well, as you can see. So um, it looks very nice and it looks like it's made of metal. So it looks like it's pretty high quality. And then also the iMac with a whole bunch of these different like rainbow colors. So uh, there's a whole bunch of stuff that they announced at this event, as well as um, Apple TV stuff and with their remotes. And there's just a whole bunch of different things going on. So definitely look out for Apple. It did take a pretty big dip today on this event, even though they they announced some good stuff. But um, that, then again, though, they didn't really announce anything too groundbreaking. I don't think it's going to make uh, make the stock fly or anything like that just based off what they announced. But um, it was some pretty good stuff that they said with their computers and stuff. But then again, it's just for people who already really like Apple. I don't think it's going to really like expand their growth too much. Sounds good. So I just want to talk a little bit more about the market overall. We can see the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ were both down around 0.7% today. It's not a huge drop, but you know, it's definitely not, uh, it's not uh, insignificant, you can say. And a lot of this uh, downwards movement, you can say, was one due to tech stocks like Apple falling and now even Netflix. But also we saw airlines down pretty big today, like UAL is down eight and a half percent today that's huge boeing's down big um what, what are the banks were down big jp morgan morgan stanley bank of america so we just saw a lot of uh 
downwards pressure today in the markets. And that's just, uh, you know, just from a lot of different sectors. So that really is what uh, dragged the markets down today. But uh, is there any other major news we should be watching out for? Yeah, there was actually some pretty big news with crude oil. And, you know, the overall market fell today as well. And crude oil got hit actually pretty hard right whenever the market did. And um, I'm not sure if this is one of the catalysts behind the market or not, but there is actually some legislation where the U.S. is trying to create a NOPEC bill um, that'll pretty much stop OPEC from controlling the oil markets if they can get that passed. And it's going to be a pretty big deal. This is on investing.com. I have the article pulled up right here. You can see they reported that says oil down on global COVID, NOPEC threat and stock sell off. So there's just a pretty big catalyst there with that NOPEC bill. I think that if they try to somehow stop OPEC from controlling the oil market, it's going to obviously create some tension there. And that's going to hurt the overall market as well as hurt the oil markets. And we can see it obviously made oil tank today from 64 down to 61.50. So we have the markets going down and oil going down at the same time. So um, it's just a pretty interesting uh, day overall. Sounds good. Well, do you have any other major news for today? Any earnings, anything like that? Yeah, we do have some earnings again. Once again, there's going to be a whole lot. So guys, go check out earnings whispers to get them all. But we do have Verizon before open as well as the NASDAQ itself is reporting earnings. So there's a couple interesting ones. Sounds great. Well, let's get right into our member of the day and the momentum plays. With today's member of the day, we have James I. So huge shout out, James. Thank you so much for all of your support. Thank you so much for all the comments. YouTube comments really help us grow our channel and we're just under 40,000 subscribers. So if you are new here, don't forget to subscribe. We post brand new videos every single day, but let's get right into the momentum plays for tomorrow. And with the first one, we have Nike to the downside. Yep, and with Nike, go ahead and make it fall below 125.70. All right, and then we have at V. Yep, at V, another one to the downside. Make them fall below $94 even, which they actually hit in after hours. And that'll be a pretty good drop below the 1,000 SMA as well. All right, and then we have United Airlines. Yep, those airlines unfortunately got destroyed. Uh, make them fall below 49.47 or 49.50 right around there. Sounds great. So we are eyeing all of these plays for potential day trades tomorrow, only if they break below the levels Tom listed. And if you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, day trades, swing trades, and access to our bots, you can click the first link in the description down below for about $40 off. But let's get right into the $22 million trade for this Friday. We are looking at the Apple 135 strike calls that expired this Friday, April 23rd. So looking at Apple and looking at the way the market is moving right now, I'm definitely going to say that they are shorting these calls, meaning that they want Apple below 135. It might be a covered call or something like that, but there's just not a ton of upwards momentum in the market right now. And even though their event was good, it wasn't like crazy or like amazing or anything like that. So uh, with that being said, I'm definitely going to say that they are shorting these calls. Yeah, I'd have to say so too. And they might be shorting them or, or I mean, this is still shorting them, but they might be covered calls as well. And that's going to be a pretty big deal, I think, if they are covered calls, because it means that they're not really, you know, looking at this in a bearish sense. They're more of looking at it, I think, is just trying to like let their shares go up there at the top, um, if they can, obviously. But that I just think that they're covering their calls there. For sure. Well, let's get right into our questions from the previous episode. With the first question, we have Rich saying, uh, what's your views on what's going on with Clove, C-L-O-V? It's been moving very interestingly with little news, but strange movements for the last few days. So great question there. Let's take a look at Clove, C-L-O-V. I heard uh, a lot of talk about this one being a potential short squeeze. It's not bad. Um, it's definitely a risky play. I don't think it's bad at these levels. I think it's at a pretty good price right now. Um, cash secured puts can be greater. Even shares, the IV is pretty high. So the options are pretty expensive. So that's that's one thing that worries me a little bit because the options are really expensive. Um, the IV is around 130%. And even just looking at the chart, the IV is pretty high. So um, it's not bad. It's just in my book, it's not like an A plus setup. Yeah, for sure. And we are getting close to support here around $8.40 or $8.35. So definitely watch out. It's it's one of those riskier setups. If we go um, out to the max daily chart, you can see how much it really is starting to pop back up. Today was a pretty big red day on the stock. Um, I personally, I'm not going to look at it 
to have a short squeeze like GameStop or anything did. But um, at the same time, if you do see it start to like really pop up tomorrow, definitely watch it because a short squeeze, any news with short squeezes could be a pretty good opportunity, especially if you're getting in low around $9 before the squeeze happens. But just keep in mind that like what happened with GameStop and AMC and stuff like that, that's like almost like a once in a lifetime deal. And that doesn't happen all the time. For sure. It was, it was definitely a, a very, very rare and crazy event. Uh, with the next question, we have Piper saying, great video, guys. I've been doing some research on HIMS. What are your thoughts on this one for the long term? So I was looking into it. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'm also not against it. It's just really, it's not a play for me. So that doesn't mean it's bad. It's just, I, I'm not a huge fan of it. So in terms of like the chart, if you're getting it basically at lows, which is great. I think a cash secured put can be, can be a complete win-win scenario, but I'm just not a huge fan of it. Yeah, I don't know what to think about it. I, I, I know what they do fundamentally, and if you guys don't, go ahead and look it up. But it's a pretty uh, interesting subject, and the <laughs> fact that they actually ran as much as they did a couple of years ago is pretty interesting. I'm surprised to see them fall as much as they did right now, so we'll just have to see... Uh, see how they can kind of recover here but it's definitely not looking good i mean they're almost down to like all time all time lows here at nine dollars and 40 cents so definitely watch out sounds good and then we have tv saying hey mike and tom can you take a look at pinterest and lvs for calls so let's take a look at pinterest uh, they do have earnings very soon they're coming down to that support right around 70 dollars, which is awesome to see it looks like they have earnings next week so I'm not sure if you're looking at this for like a day trade or like a leap or like a swing trade, but um, I definitely would not play the earnings release. Um, I would just, you know, play it by ear, like to see how it moves off that 70 support. It's not bad. It just depends on how the market's moving and, you know, how it reacts off that 70, uh, 70 support level. Yeah, that's definitely a good spot. And I think that with, uh, with the earnings coming up, I think that we might see some consolidation around this $70 level. And I don't think it's really going to move too much off of that until we see what happens with earnings or unless some news comes out like right before earnings with some big speculations or something. But I, I just think it's going to consolidate around 70 and then finally pop once earnings happen. And then also he was asking about LVS. So if we took we take a look at Las Vegas Sands, they also have earnings pretty soon. Uh, this one is ha this one has a support right around 58. It's not bad. It looks like they actually have earnings tomorrow after close. So I wouldn't play this one at all. Uh, the earnings release is just way too soon. Yeah, and the way that they're recovering is almost kind of like an airline setup. So it could be uh, could be bearish as well. Who knows how this earnings is going to go either. For sure. And then another thing I wanted to look at was Mara and Riot. So these were two Bitcoin plays. Everyone has been hyping these up so much. Um, they have a lot to do with Bitcoin and they're really pulling back because of the way Bitcoin's moving. But if you're someone who wished they bought Mara at $15 or $25 or $30, um, you can actually get some pretty solid deals with cash secured puts because they are falling a lot. And I know I explained what a cash secured put is in the beginning of this video, but I just want to give a quick example. Right now, Mara is at $33.50. You can go out to next week, which is April 30th, and you can sell like the 30 strike put, and you can get paid around $180 for doing that. Basically, if you do that, uh, no matter what, you're gonna get paid $180, but if Mara is below $30 by April 30th, then you just have to buy 100 shares at $30 each. And if you like that stock for the long term, it can be a win-win scenario, but just make sure you like the stock for the, for the long term. Um, I'm really a huge fan of cash secured puts, but Tom, do you have any like thoughts on this or is there anything else you're watching for the market tomorrow? Yeah, I'm really watching some of these stocks like United Airlines and Boeing that were going to the downside. And um, they, it looks like they went, they went down pretty good today. We saw United have those terrible earnings and drag all the airlines down. But it's almost like these stocks like Boeing, JP Morgan, um, a lot of the banks like Bank of America and JP and just a, a lot of these other sectors, they all are moving in sync right now. And um, these are the stocks that have not recovered as much as some of the tech stocks. And I'm really looking at United to the downside, Boeing to the downside. If I go to BA's chart here, they're getting really close to a support around 231. So if they break that, definitely watch for Boeing to continue dropping. And it's just not looking good. We do have earnings coming up and I'm not saying to hold these through earnings, but hopefully over the next couple of days, you guys might be able to get some pretty good day trades or some pretty good put opportunities, I should say, to the downside. 
Sounds great. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. If you want to trade with Tom and I every single day, you can click the first link in the description down below. Tom had an amazing trade with Facebook uh, today. He bought Facebook puts yesterday and sold very close to the bottom. So, of course, not every play is going to be like this. We don't win every play, but it's been doing pretty well lately. Um, if you don't like it, you can cancel it anytime. And we're doing a sale right now. So, it's the first link in the description down below. And also, don't forget to subscribe to our new live streaming channel. The link will also be in the description down below. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments down below. But other than that, thanks for watching.